Good afternoon, everyone. I am Rahul Gosain. And I am Rohit Gosain. And we are Oncology Brothers. Today, we welcome Dr. Estela Rodriguez, Associate Director of Community Outreach and a practicing thoracic medical oncologist at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. She's also the recent recipient of a Patient Advocacy Award for her ongoing work in this field. In our discussion, we hope Dr. Rodriguez will walk us through her approach to treating small cell lung cancer. Without further ado, let us welcome Dr. Estela Rodriguez. Thank you so much for the invitation. I feel honored to be here. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rodriguez, for joining us. Our focus will be on using this algorithm so that we can refer back to this in our daily practice and continue to reiterate the current standard of care in our community settings. We will then discuss a few common scenarios from community and get a better understanding on how to use the treatment available options that we have. So okay. here's the algorithm. Yeah, I, I, I like it. That is very simple. And, um, and you know, we're talking about a small cell lung cancer that is really one of the lung cancers where we really haven't made a lot of progress. And we know that uh, about 10 to 15 percent of uh, cases of the lung cancers that we see are small cell lung cancer. The first thing in community practice when you meet a patient with small cell lung cancer is to really stage them. And it's the easiest stage to, to, <laughs> to remember in small cell lung cancer because you're either limited to a stage that you can radiate. And we have a case um, you did uh, cover that there are some cases that we have done surgery for. And then extensive, which is 70% of the cases where patients have disease that is uh, you know, they're outside the, the thorax and many times in the brain. I think first for the limited part, I like that you did cover um, in this that there are patients that should be given a surgical option. It's just that we don't meet many of them because small cell lung cancer by its nature is rapidly dividing. So for a patient to have a tumor less than five centimeters, by the time they get through a whole workup, many of them have progressed to something more advanced. However, they're not your traditional early stage lung cancer. These patients have small cell lung cancer, which is a different type of beast. I mean, this is a, a cell that can stay behind in the lymph nodes and they're very high risk for recurrence. So these patients should definitely, if they're lucky enough to be diagnosed early with a lesion less than five centimeters, with no lymph nodes involvement, I would definitely recommend surgery as an evaluation, but consider systemic treatment with standard carboplatin etoposide. And then patients that have lymph node involvement, this is when it gets a little bit more controversial and the NCCN guidelines really favor. They don't favor, they give you the option of treating it, treating it as locally advanced with concurrent chemoradiotherapy because we know that these patients for the most part have um, advanced locally advanced disease and they will recur in the chest and adding radiation will really prevent recurrences. So I, I think for the limited stage, we don't have immunotherapy as an option. We have chemotherapy um, after surgery, if you're lucky enough to detect these cases early, or if the patients have lymph node involvement, we should consider combined modality therapy. And there is some kind of nuance, nuance here for the combined modality therapy. Uh, we have an older regimen, the Teresi the regimen, where they did uh, twice a day radiation and they found better outcomes for these patients that are getting concurrent chemoradiotherapy. So you can push the envelope a little bit with the hyperfractionation of radiation, but the key here is to offer the patients systemic treatment and local treatment. Um, so that is when I see limited stage, um, that's what we think about. Um, we we do have here in your algorithm PCI, uh, which stands for prophylactic cranial irradiation. And we can have this discussion in limited stage disease, and we can have this discussion in extensive stage disease. The initial data from the meta-analysis was that in, for patients that were limited stage disease that were potentially curable, you will get more out of offering them PCI. Now, that data has been more controversial as more data has come out. We had um, uh, an initial ECO protocol that sh showed some improvement. Then we had a Japanese protocol in the extensive disease setting that didn't show improvement. So the general feeling is that if you're limited stage, you definitely need to be followed very closely uh, because we have better technologies to follow these patients with more routine MRI and we can offer them um, SBRT for early recurrences. So we can, in our practice for 
for patients with limited stage disease, we have a discussion about risks and benefits of doing PCI because there's data for that. But we also give them the option with the understanding that if you're willing to get a very close follow up of the brain, you could offer them close follow up. And there's an, an energy trial that is trying to do that randomized patients to whole brain versus, um, you know, PCI of the whole brain or doing follow with SBRT as needed. So there's kind of some nuance to the PCI discussion, but it definitely should be is a discussion that needs to be had because when patients do recur, which ultimately they will recur with limited stage, they will recur in the brain. So if you could have prevented that, you will give patients both an overall survival advantage and a lot of quality of life. In terms of adenocarcinoma, we utilize SBRT when one cannot undergo surgery. Do you utilize something similar if a patient is platinum ineligible and cannot undergo surgery to rely on SBRT being a treatment modality? You know, that's a great question because I could imagine a case, you know, of someone very elderly that you really couldn't phantom going to surgery and you wanted to offer them some kind of local control. I think, you know, as a palliative option of someone who couldn't tolerate standard treatment, um, it's reasonable because even with standard treatment, we know our outcomes are limited, um, you know, for this type Makes of sense. disease. Yeah. Thank you. And Dr. Rodriguez, just uh, in terms of follow up again for early stage, you mentioned that we tend to use carbotoposide for adjuvant. Would you consider cisplatin etoposide over carbotoposide as we know that there's more overall survival benefit with cis? Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for that question. I was I was looking at the extensive. Yeah, the platinum based chemo for patients that can tolerate, we still believe that cisplatin gives you an advantage and that should be our preferred adjuvant treatment for uh, non-small cell and small cell lung cancer. Uh, but again, we do get responses to uh, in the in the community practice you know there was a patient that wasn't eligible for cisplatin because of renal dysfunction and hearing loss i would feel very comfortable using carboplatin at top side and uh, coming back to the pci topic just to clarify so in the community settings would you prefer us leaning more towards um, offering pci in limited stage or close monitoring what's your um, preference here yeah, I think that, you know, it, it all depends. You know, I think this is a discussion that I feel the patient's point of view is, needs to be included because, you know, for a patient that's younger, that is trying to be very aggressive, I believe PCI still will have an, an overall survival advantage. An older patient with, you know, memory issues and and more a different kind of life expectancy, I probably will be more conservative and do a, a close follow-up. But for patients that you're trying to do more aggressive disease, I think the PCI should be offered. Perfect, because that is what we would do yeah. in extensive stage where mm -hmm. we tend to lean more towards close follow-up. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And I agree, yeah, I agree. And extensive disease, I think is different because you're already dealing with a disease that is more, there's less of a chance that you're gonna cure this disease and everything is palliative in a way. Exactly. So, so that that option of routine follow up, we just treat in the areas that need to be treated first, um, has really helped us. But that is that is, you know, the reason why the original trials were more positive than they are now is that the original trials were not following patients with very good MRI. So they were really leaving patients that they thought, you know, had no disease and they had disease left there. So they, that's where you were really not really seeing any. Um, that's what you see in the controversy now, because we actually are able to pick up that most of these cases have disease there already. So you're treating patients, you're not preventing uh, brain disease, you're treating them for brain disease. Absolutely. I think that would be a great segue in talking about extensive stage small cell lung cancer. Yeah, so extensive stage is really um, where you will be meeting most patients. Yeah, so I guess I will cover the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, like, like in non-small non cell lung cancer, we have in a lot of immunotherapy approvals. We only have two here. So we have the EMPOWER trial, which is a tesolosumab that came first. And then later on, we had the approval of dorbalumab with the same, it's really exactly the same trial and exactly the same results to me. So if you, for some reason, had an insurance company that was only approving dorbalumab, I would feel very comfortable because both regimens kind of showed us the same median survival improvement about two months. So it's not a very dramatic improvement, 
but it is an improvement nonetheless. And when we have followed people, at least in the Empower data that is longer, the one year survival was 52% for those patients receiving immunotherapy with their chemo, as opposed to like 38% when you receive the chemo alone. So it does help patients get to a better place at a year, and hopefully more patients will be responding to chemotherapy longer, which kind of gets me to the point of what happens, you know, when you receive initial chemotherapy. So you receive four cycles and the Empower trials and the Caspian trials allow carboplatin. If a patient with extensive stage has responded really well throughout, you would consider consolidating with additional radiation to the chest or the primary lesion. Yeah, I would uh, I would offer that option to patients. It may, you know, in, in extensive stage disease, you're is palli palliative treatment. So you're Absolutely. trying to you're trying to extend survival. I mean, immunotherapy, as much as it's new, it only gives you a median survival improvement of two months. Uh, but radiation to the chest for someone that clear disease in the bone and clear disease in the liver, and you really radiate the chest, you can prevent a recurrence right there where they're gonna be impacted in the short term. So I think that should be discussed with patients. Mm -hmm. After the four cycles, we continue immunotherapy alone. And then it's when it gets kind of interesting, you know, we, we have had this cut off of six months that you're platinum sensitive or platinum refractory. And it's kind of like, you know, artificial cut off because you could you could be responding at 6.5 months or recur at 5.5 <laughs> months. And who's to say that it's not the same patient? Mm -hmm. um, so what we have done is that obviously if you're responding on maintenance immunotherapy and we have had people that have responded um for up to a year of maintenance immunotherapy, even when that patient recurs and if they're recurring slowly, you can make the case that definitely they should be rechallenged with platinum-based chemotherapy, the same regimen you used before because it worked and it worked for that long. And in some of those cases, you know, in the trials, they stop immunotherapy, but I have continued immunotherapy in that rare case where patients have progressed after six months, they truly had disease that was responsive to immunotherapy and Immunotherapy does have some advantages for these patients. It's easier to tolerate than ongoing platinum-based chemo. Um, it's the only maintenance treatment we have in small cell lung cancer. We don't have any other maintenance therapy. And potentially you could have some activity in the brain if we kind of extrapolate from other tumor types. So I think that for the patients who, who are uh, platinum sensitive and they have responded to immunotherapy, definitely we challenge them with the similar regimen and consider con continuation of immunotherapy. What happens for patients that are not lucky enough to respond to maintenance immunotherapy, or the in, we have people patients that progress in the middle of their treatment with chemotherapy in those first four cycles. So you know that these patients have very refractory disease and you don't need the six month cut off. I mean, you know that these patients are not gonna do well. And unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of options until recently. We only had Topotecan, and I'm sure that many of us in practice have used Topotecan and stopped using Topotecan because it is really a very tough drug to give. Lorbinectidem, which is a newer um, agent that we have, was compared head to head to Topotecan, and it showed um, improvement in survival. So now we have a drug that's better. Slightly better, not dramatically better, but slightly better. But also, it's a drug that pre preserves more of the quality of life of the patient because it definitely causes less cytopenias, less neutropenic fever. It can cause some rash, uh, but it was definitely easier to tolerate, and it's once a month. Thank you so much for walking over the extensive stage aspect of it. When focusing on small cell outside of lung, that is GI or GU origin okay. small cell, mm. do you consider IO in combination with chemotherapeutic regimen? In addition to that, if they progress lorbinectidine, is that an option at all? So that is, you know, that's an option that is being looked at in clinical trials. Um, I definitely have treated small cell for, of the prostate and other parts of the body as a, others, a small cell that responds to platinum-based chemo. Immunotherapy is kind of a question. Um, I don't think we have a straight answer there, but they, I, I definitely think that if you have very aggressive, fast-growing disease and if you can get something out of immunotherapy, um, but pdl one expression doesn't matter here. To answer your question, I probably, you have to look at the insurance company, how they take it, you know, if I'm allowed to it and I want to kind of push the envelope, I have, we have done it. Uh, we definitely have done platinum-based uh, chemotherapy and in some cases added immunotherapy, but we know it's a different disease. You know, we know it's a different disease. 
Absolutely. And Dr. Rodriguez, um, coming back to use of IO, we know a small subset of EGFR mutated patients can convert to small cell. We also know that EGFR mutated patients do not often respond to immunotherapy. So a patient that has converted from EGFR mutated to small cell, in that scenario, do you use chemo and IO or do you rely just on chemotherapy? Um, so I have I have gone through this experience a couple of times. You know, as we have more patients with EGFR mutations live longer, that's when you see these small cell transformations. But they're not small cell transformation. There's actually interesting data that this may be a small cell clone that is there from day one that it evolves as you suppress the EGFR clone. And uh, in that case, um, definitely platinum-based chemotherapy has worked. Many of these patients have been on osimertinib, so we can go straight to an immunotherapy. I have tried immunotherapy because this is very fast-growing disease on people who are young, uh, but I have not seen responses. Do, well, I really think that the platinum-based chemo is what you needed to try next, and there's an, act, there's an active trial that one of the cooperative groups is looking at where they're going to test this this hypothesis, if adding atezolizumab in the setting of small cell transformation in EGFR makes a difference. But I have personally tried it anecdotally, and it hasn't added a lot. Um, I definitely think you need to start chemo immediately for those patients and radiation for palliation. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, for taking the time to review this algorithm. We hope this discussion will reinforce the current standard of care practice for small cell lung cancer in our community setting. Thank you so much again for your time.